If you're a software engineer, you've probably wondered what it really takes to get to that senior level. And here's the thing. It's not just about knowing more frameworks or languages. It's a fundamental shift in how you think. So over the next few minutes, we're going to break down that exact mindset shift. And I promise, it might just change how you look at your work tomorrow. Let's dive in. This probably hits pretty close to home, right? When you're just starting out, the whole world is about one thing, writing code. You're focused on shipping features, proving you can do the job, and your life revolves around syntax, tools, and that ever-growing ticket queue. And look, that's the starting line for every single developer. But it's a perspective you have to outgrow to really move forward. And right here, this is the first big plot twist. Junior engineers, they focus on writing code. But senior engineers, they spend a shocking amount of their time figuring out how to not write code. Yeah, it sounds completely backward, I know. But understanding this one little thing is the first huge step toward that senior mindset. Okay, so let's unpack that a little bit. It's so easy to fall into this trap where you think more lines of code means more progress. You feel productive, but senior engineers, they've learned that the real goal isn't just to build fast, it's to build things that last. It's a massive shift from just pure speed to focusing on sustainability and quality. This is what's going on inside a senior engineer's head before they even think about opening their code editor. Instead of just jumping in and asking, how can I build this? They're asking, wait a minute, should we even build this at all? They're thinking about the real impact. They're digging around to see if a solution already exists. And they're already imagining all the ways this could blow up in production. It's all about de-risking the project before it even begins. And here is a core fundamental truth. Code isn't an asset. It's actually a liability. You see, every single line you write has a long-term cost attached to it. It has to be read, it has to be understood, tested, and maintained forever. So more code just means more complexity and a lot more places for bugs to hide. This is a principle that senior engineers absolutely live by. You know, this whole idea of avoiding new code, it naturally leads us to the next big shift, thinking in systems. A senior engineer stops seeing their work as just a list of individual tasks. Instead, they start to see the entire interconnected machine, it's really the difference between looking at one single tree and seeing the entire forest. Think about it like this. A junior engineer gets a new task, and their first thought is all about implementation. You know, the functions, the classes, the logic. A senior engineer, though, they take a big step back. Their first questions are, why are we even doing this, and how does this one little piece fit into the larger system? It's a total change in perspective. And the one thing they are always, always optimizing for is this concept maintainability. See, they're not just trying to make something work right now. They're constantly thinking about the poor engineer six months from now, who, let's be honest, might be them, who has to fix a bug or add a new feature. Can that future person understand the code quickly and make it change without breaking everything? That right there is the real test of good software. I love this quote because it just nails it. Building a feature is great, don't get me wrong, but it's temporary. Building a robust, maintainable system, that's how you create lasting value. And that's the leap from being good to being truly great. Okay, so what happens when things inevitably break? Because, let's face it, they always do. Well, this is another area where the mindset difference is just night and day. It's all about moving from that panicked, frantic firefighting to a calm, methodical investigation. It's about having a process instead of just reacting. Here's the real secret. That senior engineer who finds the bug in 10 minutes? They're not some kind of magician. They're faster because while everyone else is in full-on panic mode, changing random lines and just praying something works, they stay calm. Their superpower isn't some secret terminal command. It's their process. And this is that process. You can think of it like the scientific method, but for code. First, and this is the hardest part, you just slow down. Resist that urge to start changing things. Then you observe. What is actually happening? From there, you form a clear, testable hypothesis about the cause, and only then do you test it. It's a simple, repeatable strategy that just flat out works. And this is why that system level thinking is so critical for debugging. Get this, studies show that a huge number of bugs, we're talking like 80%, they aren't just simple typos. They come from a fundamental misunderstanding of how different parts of the system actually interact with each other. A calm, methodical process is how you uncover those much deeper issues. All right, our next point might just be the most underrated skill in all of engineering. 
We have this image of developers as the solitary coders in a dark room, but the reality is modern software is a team sport. And in that sport, communication isn't a soft skill. It is a core technical skill. You know, if you were to actually measure a senior engineer's output, you'd see something kind of wild. The amount of code they write might actually go down, but their output of design documents, architectural diagrams, and just clear, well-written explanations, it skyrockets. Their main job shifts from just producing code to creating clarity and alignment for the entire team. And this is why that skill is so powerful. The use communication to make sure everyone on the team understands the real costs and benefits of a decision. They use it to mentor and unblock their teammates. And maybe most importantly, they use it to protect the project by saying no to a bad idea, but in a way that actually brings people along instead of pushing them away. This brings us to our final and honestly, maybe the most important shift of them all. It's the move from being a coder who just completes tasks to being a leader who owns outcomes. And let me be clear, this has absolutely nothing to do with your job title. Here's the perfect example. When production goes down, a junior engineer's job is done when the immediate fire is out. The bug is fixed. Phew. But for a senior engineer, that's just the beginning. They own the entire outcome. That means asking, okay, why did this happen? And how do we make sure this can never, ever happen again? They don't just fix the bug. They fix the process that allowed the bug to exist in the first place. That deep sense of ownership means understanding there's almost never a single right answer. Junior engineers often get stuck looking for the one perfect technical solution. Seniors know that every single decision is just a series of trade-offs. Should we optimize for speed to market, long-term reliability, development cost? The right choice always, always depends on the business context. So if you only remember one thing from all of this, let it be this. Writing code makes you a programmer. That's the entry ticket. But thinking beyond the code, thinking about the systems, the communication, and the business outcomes, that's what makes you a senior engineer. So I want to leave you with a question to ask yourself on your very next project. Instead of chasing the most perfect, elegant, super scalable solution that's going to last for the next decade, just start by asking this. What is the absolute simplest thing that could possibly work just for now? Answering that question honestly, well, it can change everything.